Before we start this video, I just want to say this thing was entirely shot on a phone, so the quality is a bit poor. Also, I really desperately need a haircut, but we're just going to forget about that for now. Anyway, today I've got a pretty interesting video to talk about. For the longest time, I've been used to playing, streaming, and recording sim racing on this desktop PC, which has uh, an 8700K, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and uh, a GTX 1080 Ti. But recently, one of my best mates, Damien, let me this laptop. And that got me thinking, can you game sim race competitively, effectively, with something with low specs like this? With that, I put together the sim rig. So we've got a play seat here. We've got Fanatec gear, Fanatec shifter, Fanatec pedals, Logitech stuff there. And uh, I mean, that didn't really matter so much, but we're gonna plug it into this laptop. Specs are right there. So they're really not amazing. That's kind of the point of this video to see if we can game on something this low end. And we're gonna connect it up to a TV because if you're sim racing, you've likely already got a TV in your house somewhere. You've got a laptop and you've probably got some kind of wheel set up, whether it be like the Logitech one down there or this, or maybe you've got a pad or maybe you're, you're, you hate yourself and you're sim racing with a keyboard and mouse. Anyway, we've got this set up with, because this is a dongle book, we've got a dongle there and we're gonna plug it into the TV. We're gonna run a few games. This is a fairly lower end laptop, so we're gonna see if we can run any kind of competitive sim racing. Okay, so we're just gonna go through the settings now, and as you can see, we've got everything plugged in. We've set it to low, 1920 by 1080, 60 hertz. Um, we've got a few assists on and stuff like that, but just checking video resolution and settings, it's basically rock bottom at 1080p. Okay, after some messing around with controls, We've got everything pretty much set up, so let's take over a spin. So you can see frame rates are pretty decent, doesn't feel very choppy, although as you can tell because we're on the lower settings the graphics have taken a toll on the fidelity of the guitar experience isn't ideal. It's definitely not very immersive, but you know, in terms of being uh, competitive, you, you definitely could be with this kind of setup. Mm -hmm. Obviously, not me because I just crashed into a wall. I've noticed that even though I crashed an awful lot, the frames haven't dropped and I haven't noticed any massive glitches, which I would uh, come expect from me just flying into corners at 90 mile an hour. But yeah, overall, pretty good experience, I would say. Next from Dirt Rally 2, and as you can see, we've got it set to 1080p. If I go to advanced, it's on ultra low, so basically, again, bottom of the barrel. Big fat activate Windows logo there, <laughs> because uh, for some reason, when you change the resolution on this laptop, it decides that you no longer have a Windows license. One of the many reasons I hate Windows 10, but there we are. We're going to go into a free roam. We're just going to pick a, pick a car, have a go around, see what happens. Uh, the fan did spin up quite a lot for that last one, so I'm hoping that it doesn't go crazy for this one, but based on the fact that it's a, a very thin and light laptop, I would expect it to spin up faster uh, and be louder than a bigger laptop that has a more sophisticated cooling assembly. As you can see, the graphics are pretty poor. There's basically no detail apart from in the sky, which is just a, a box. Um, it's just a sky box. With that in mind, it's definitely, you can definitely tell this is one of the, the many areas that you can expect to see a problem, I suppose, because in a lot of r titles like this, rallying, where you do need more detail to see where you're going, it's kind of different to circuit racing uh, because it's a little bit more unpredictable unpredict uh, with this one. You kind of do need to have the graphics up which is an area that this will simply not be able to do. I'm telling you that now, uh, it just won't be able to handle it. So you're kind of stuck with lower end settings. I could try boosting them, uh, but just I could not take them to high. Um, so let's stop here. I'm gonna take it up to medium, the medium preset of graphics. And as you can see, so much better already, just lighter really in the whole thing. Um, and I'm already feeling a few frame drops here. It's definitely not as responsive as the previous effort, but you are getting significantly better visuals. You know, it's kind of whatever you can pick, whichever you really want. 
Um, this has got an MX250, so it's not like Intel Iris or Intel Integrated Graphics, but it's it's still not really powerful enough to be uh, used for even 1080p high gaming. Now you can probably hear the fan spinning up on the laptop if I just shut my mouth for a minute. And that is definitely something you've got to be wary of with these thinner laptops, is they do have poorer cooling assemblies, so you kind of got to expect um, things like the, the fan ramping up. But overall, I'm kind of happy with how this has gone. It's definitely not the, the game that everyone's playing, it's kind of more niche, but it's a game that I particularly enjoy, so I'm just going to leave this here. I'd say this is kind of a success. Next up, BeamNG. This is more of a, a soft body and hard body physics simulator, so it's not necessarily a racing sim. We're just going to have to leave it on this resolution, which is just below 720p. For some reason, uh, this thing just really doesn't want to play ball. So it's taken a while to load in those trees, but as you can see, we're loaded in now, and the quality is pretty poor. So I'm just going to spawn in something a little bit more zesty, and we'll drive that around. Okay, this will do. So we've kind of, I think we've got just all the settings dialed in. The real test will be when we spawn in AI, because that is where the CPU, I think, will really show its weaknesses. You can see it's kind of loading stuff in over a draw distance. So if I slow down, you can kind of see the guardrail there, just kind of loading in, uh, which isn't isn't fantastic. But we are getting some decent frames. I'd say this is a well over 60 FPS here. V-Sync is off. So we're going to stop, we're going to spawn in some AI traffic. Okay, so it's loading in the AI now, it's kind of dropping some frames whilst it's loading it in, but I'm sure once it's all in, the frames will level out. Let's just uh, give it a go and see what happens. We're, we're probably below 30 FPS at this point. And the laptop, weirdly enough, has dropped its fan speed, which is a bit of a weird one. We've just done a front end crash in the first person view and it didn't drop any frames then, weirdly enough. Although I'm not sure how much that is to do with the fact that we've got the lowest resolution possible on this thing. Yeah, I think overall BeamNG is a really good test to see if you can really put strain on the, the hardware that we've got. And BeamNG is the, the proof that you cannot do that with the, with the MX250 and the quad core i7 we've got on this laptop. Everyone's favorite sim, Assetto Corsa time. We're going to go into the controls. I'm gonna map a couple of the, oh, it looks like most of them are mapped. So graphically, we've kind of got everything on a, on minimum. We've turned most of the settings off. So this is everyone's favorite simulator, Assetto Corsa. Uh, and I haven't actually played an awful lot of it. I've got about, I think, 10 to 15 hours in it, because I have used it in the past. Um, for, for kind of testing out hardware, but this feels really smooth. I would say this is a 75 FPS maybe. We might may actually be able to uh, load up the settings a little bit more there as we do a little bit of an unintentional drift. I must say I haven't got a lot of experience in the sim rig. I have been working an awful lot for like the past three or four months and haven't had much time to, to really go for, for a spin in this, but I'm really impressed with how well this this thing's coping. Leaving that there, I would say that this is a particularly decent example, but we're going to go on to one more game just to really finish it off. Okay, so I had to try iRacing because it is my favourite online racing sim. So if we go to graphics now, it's all on pretty much just the lowest possible. So what we're going to do now is just click done and drive and just give it a go. It's on the lowest settings, 1080p, and we're in the M8. GTE and we're at Bathurst. So straight off the bat, picking up some speed, we're, we're sitting at 50 FPS, which you may or may not be able to see at the top right there. So cold tires, cold brakes. So coming into sight, like the graphical fidelity is fairly good considering it's on the lower settings and it is running fairly well. We're getting a solid 60 FPS here, probably able to turn the details up a little bit more. Uh, but the, the main thing is, this is the definitively competitive online racing sim. So if it works in this, it should 
really working everything else. I mean, my driving isn't working, but that's not the point. So we're just coming over the hill now at some speed, and I'm just, I'm just looking to see if I can see anything pop into view, like the field of view, like we saw in BeamNG. So this corner's flat, easy peasy. If you were to kind of race competitively in leagues or anything like that, if, as long as you haven't got my driving skill or style, <laughs> then you should be just fine with this. I think, yeah, we're getting 60 FPS. With that all said and done, I think this is a perfectly decent way to start off sim racing. If you're someone who's not got a lot of space or you, you, know, you have a laptop but you don't really have the money to upgrade it or to buy a PC, this is something you can start. You can get a Logitech wheel for like £50 used, or you could use a keyboard and mouse, or you could use a pad, and you can still sim race on a laptop that's got an MX250 graphics card. And you can get laptops with 1050 Ti's for around, what, £500 or less these days, which is really cool. I think it held up pretty well. Obviously, its fan did start to spin pretty crazily at one point and you kind of have to deal with that the fact that it's such a thin and light laptop i mean this thing's kind of meant for executives not for eye racing and with that it's probably time for me to end thank you all so much for watching i've been ryan thomas with flat 4k and i'll see you later peace